All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good buddy, Kevin Gastola. Kevin is a journalist who writes the Dissenter blog at Fire Dog Lake, which you can find at dissenter.firedoglake.com. He is the co-host with Rania Kalik of the podcast Unauthorized Disclosure. You can find him on Twitter at kgastola. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you for having me. All right, so Kevin, I think the theme, the overarching theme of our, at least the first part of our interview today, was going to be recent crazy ass court decisions. Um, let's start out by discussing a recent ruling by a DC Circuit Court of Appeals on torture and abuse at Guantanamo Bay. Um, what exactly was this case about, and what did the judge actually rule? Okay, so this is a case that was brought by six former Guantanamo prisoners, people held at the Guantanamo Bay prison camps uh, down in that uh, hellhole that President Barack Obama hasn't quite closed yet. And uh, so the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that uh, former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld and other employees at the Defense Department had not tortured or abused these prisoners when they were waiting to be released. Um, All of these six were cleared for release, um, and then they were, for a period of time, they remained at Guantanamo before they were uh, sent back home to countries or to uh, third countries, uh, another country that would be willing to take them. And um, these individuals were subjected to uh, mistreatment and and abuse uh, while they were waiting to be returned home. So the the list of of things that lawyers representing them from the Center for Constitutional Rights said, and uh, and I want to give the names because these are actual people. So Yuxel, Salik Gogas, Ibrahim Sen, Nuri Mert, Bakirjan Hassam, and Abu Muhammad, and they alleged that uh, they were subjected to prolonged solitary confinement, sleep deprivation, exposure to temperature extremes, light and sound manipulation, beatings, threats of transfer to a foreign country for torture, sexual harassment, forced nudity, exploitation of phobias, forced stress positions, and the removal of comfort items like religious items, deprivation of medical treatment, or prolonged short shackling with wrists and ankles bound together and to the floor. Um, And so Judge Janice Rogers-Brown is uh, appointed to the court by President George W. Bush. She's a Bush appointee. And she um, wrote the decision uh, for the court that basically laid out that this is all part of the job at Guantanamo, that uh, it was foreseeable that these men would be subjected to some sort of abuse, essentially, and that because there could be no proof that these officers were actually intending to torture or abuse these men, that it was just a part of the experience, I guess, of being indefinitely detained. Actually, I, I want to read. I, I'll read this actual quote. I have it in front of me here. This is the. This is an actual DC DC Circuit Court of Appeals judge, Justice Brown, wrote in this opinion. Auth quote authorized or not, the conduct was certainly foreseeable because maintaining peace, security, and safety at a place like Guantanamo Bay is a stern and difficult business. She's saying that torture is foreseeable and 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 it's and it's fine. It's 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 unbelievable. This is it's 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 so infuriating that this that this judge can just sort of just like shrug her shoulders and say, you know, like like she's I don't I don't even I'm so upset about this at, at how uh, 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 someone who supposedly believes in the law can just be like, ah, you know, it's it, real life is like the show 24. We got to be able to torture. You know, it's it's a great thing. This this is this is madness, man. Yeah, uh, and and it got even worse because as, as, I, as yeah. I, I mentioned in my posting, that not only were they saying that had there been this sort of torture and abuse, because actually the judges don't say that this actually happened to these men. I mean, these men say they were mistreated, but the judge says, well, you don't have specific officers' names, and and you don't have any actual proof that any particular officer was involved in any of these crimes that you say were committed against your clients. And uh, so because you are subject, uh, like all of us, to the the secrecy of the U.S. government and, and, you know, can't magically 
uh, discern through, I go, I guess, telepathy, who is torturing <laughs> your <laughs> client. I, sorry, you lose. Um, you don't have a case to bring against the government. Yeah. Uh, sick. So yeah, uh, you know, and again, like it looks like Iraq is kicking up again. So that's fun. We can keep a, you know, and again, like a not not that Guantanamo. That most of the prisoners that are in Guantanamo are cleared for release still, and they've been tortured and they're still sitting and rotting in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, even though you know, not again, not again, not the problem that Guantanamo Bay is still open. Again, that's kind of not the problem. It's the fact that they're holding that. The, it's not that even that Obama hasn't clo- closed Gitmo. It's the fact that they're holding these people without trial and, and torturing them still to this day. Well, well, one quick point just to make sure before we leave this is just that people understand that what this effectively does is it means there is no clear prohibition on military military torture and abuse of prisoners in a time of war. And people should be really well aware that there have been numerous cases that uh, groups like the Center for Constitutional Rights have brought in the courts. And every time the Obama administration's lawyers have uh, basically succeeded and won and convinced the judges... Um, and so you've effectively had this all decriminalized. 